And one last point on that upper and the fit of the shoe. I actually, I'd be, I, sh I went true to size. I'm almost wishing I would. Oh yeah, onward and upward, drinking my emergency. Oh, just took some medicine. I feel so much better. It's going to allow me to talk with all of you today about some running shoe reviews and we've got a lot to cover. So let's dive in. Hope you're doing well. All studio today. I did get my run in, but I didn't feel like filming just because I'm under the weather. And so no outside filming, but we're going to get you some good info on these uh, three shoes. The here they are, the Hoka Speed Go 4, the Nike React Infinity Run Flyknit and the Asics Gel Nimbus Light. They're all right there. But first, shout out to the New York City Marathon. Let us know down in the comments. Today was the day when you find out if you were accepted. I realize it's a crazy lottery system. It's really difficult to get into. Were you, did you get that email from the New York City Marathon? Let us know down in the comments. I hope many of you did. And yes, we'll do a group run before the New York City Marathon. I got in, so it's exciting. Um, and oh yeah, I did. We were talking back and forth on Twitter with a couple people about the price of the New York City Marathon. I realize it's, it's so expensive. I think it's 290-ish for US residents and then it's even more for international. I suspect one of the reasons, uh, just whoever was talking on Twitter about this, is because of the security. I'm guessing the New York Roadrunners has to pay the NYPD to keep the place safe. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe they just do it, but anyway, it's like security. Um, I'm sure it's not, um, I'm sure it's not cheap for the New York Roadrunners, but I know. So I hope, anyway, I hope you got in. And yes, uh, here we go. Here's the shoes right here. And I'm also going to compare the Speed Goat 4 to the Evo Speed Goat. All right, so there's the Evo Speed Goat on top. Oh yeah, last but not least, before we dive into the Speed Goat 4 first, is that I'm reading your comments. Thank you for chiming into the uh, question of the day two days ago, I think, about what did you think of the Asics Glide Ride full review video? Did you like the new style? And uh, a lot of good, some people love the style. Some people love more the riffing here in the studio where I'm just talking. Um, so that's what we're doing today, obviously, is riffing and just talking and not scripted out at all. So thank you again for chiming in. But there was one comment um, that I'm just going to address because I, I could see why that this could come up. Is somebody was concerned that I'm wasting running shoes because I run in so many running shoes. And I get it. Um, there are, and I don't take shoes to 200, I don't even take shoes to 200 miles. Like I'm just being very frank with you. And most shoes should get at least 300, 400 miles out of the shoe. Why? Because there's a lot of running shoes to test. But just so you know, for the people concerned, is that I, ne I haven't thrown away, I was trying to think inside, I haven't thrown away a pair of running shoes in, I believe, three years. I'm even trying to remember which one it was, where like the shoe was just totally dead and shot and there's holes in the upper. Um, so what, I, what do I do? I either donate them at the local running uh, store or we do, I have, I'm pointing up here because we have all the running shoes that you have donated for the running shoe giveaway. So I never throw away these running shoes and I either keep them for comparisons for the iteration of shoes for, for like, you know, 2019 to 2020. Uh, for example, I will keep the Speed Go 4 so I can compare it to the 2021, uh, 2020 iteration. And so, yeah, just wanted to clear the air there. I'm not trying to waste shoes um, because I will either donate them or use them for the vlog. And so the game plan for today, this is, we've never done this before on the channel. Why am I doing three shoes in uh, one video? I'm busy. I'm behind and I don't want to do this all the time, but I, I need to catch up. And so many people are asking for my full review of the Nike React Infinity Run Flyknit. Uh, and I just am so, it's just, especially with baby Henry and then going to Atlanta on Friday. Like if I don't do it now, all three in one video, it could be another two, three, four weeks before I get to it. So that's not acceptable. We're going to dive into it right now. All right, Hoka Speed Go 4. We've got a four millimeter drop from heel to toe. 32 millimeter stack height in the heel, 28 millimeter stack height in the forefoot. And we're looking at 10.8 ounces in men's size nine. And let's fire up my scale. Cause those, those weights, uh, let me just hear one second. It really helps me to know my weight. Uh, woo, 10.9 ounces in my size. I don't know if that's right. Cause I'm a smaller than a size nine. So anyway, it is a little bit heavier. Um, especially compared to the Evo Speed Goat. Let's put that on the scale. In my size, oh, 
8.4 ounces so over two ounces lighter i'll come back to this shoe in a minute and yes i did go true to size on the hoka speed go for uh one point is that when you're running out on the trails in, in this oh i should mention this is a neutral trail shoe okay there's that twist test uh when you're running out on the trails in the dead of, you know the heat of summer like your feet get hot and there's dust and it's just it's just really a you know especially here in the west like we get a lot of dust because we don't get as much moisture as other locations in the country and so i'm really enjoying the breathability which was increased and bumped up from the speed goat 3 uh through the toe box i notice it immediately especially during these uh, colder months um so i like that work that hoka put into the breathability through the upper um it is not oh wait yes it is a gusseted tongue all right gusseted tongue uh which you know how much i love those gusseted tongues and the evo speed goat is as well let me just yeah it is as well i just love that lockdown feel with the gusseted tongue which means the tongue is connected to the outer wall of the upper um a little bit of overlay action i could foresee now listen i been, i tested the shoe in december and january and so the snow and ice was not if i um it was well it was frozen so i was not running through mud and through puddles that much so i would be i'd be curious to see how the overlays would do in a more you know running through streams or running through uh puddles or just like spring and summertime conditions for that upper and onto that outsole and then i'm going to come back to the midsole is that i really really like the tread pattern that hoka has put into the speed goat 4. i got incredible grip out there uh, again through the dirt through the ice through the snow um, and it's some vibram so that means the uh, type of rubber is a little more stickier and tackier so if you're running in you know over wet logs or wet rocks or whatever you should get a little better grip with that vibram outsole there through the forefoot um, so anyway really love the outsole on the hocus Pico 4 and onto that midsole amazing absolutely amazing springy is the word that comes to mind it's got a nice energy return and 32 and 28 so it's not crazy high um i wouldn't put it in the maximalist category it's more that uh medium to high probably more in the in the high category for stack height in the shoe oh if i was racing a 50k in 2020 there's a good chance i would i would consider this shoe or definitely for a 50 miler and let's just jump into it right now who is this shoe best for I'm going to say people that are training for longer trail races and want a little more protection and absorbing of that pounding through your uh, gait cycle. All right. Um, I just, I love, love, love the midsole on the Speed Go 4. All right. Price $145. And compared to that EVO Speed Go, we're looking at $160. All right. I'm going to say, everyone, $15. I would lean toward buying the EVO Speed Goat over the Speed Goat 4, uh, even for training. I think you could train in the EVO Speed Goat. And yes, this is the racing version of the Speed Goat lineup from Hoka. Uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's worth it if you are, you know, two ounces. Like, that's quite a bit of weight difference. All right, there you go. Those are my thoughts on the Speed Goat 4. I love this shoe, love this shoe, love this shoe. Um, and I, I, I wish it was trail running season right now because I would probably pick up a second pair and you know what that means for me or I would I would either pick up uh, another pair of the EVO Speed Goat or the Speed Goat 4 either one um, again though if you can afford a little bit more money 15 bucks I'd lean toward the EVO Speed Goat for that uh, for that weight reduction and moving on to that A6 gel Nimbus light there it is over there and let's put it on the scale right now so 8.8 .8 ounces all right that's a good weight in men's size nine we're looking at 9.6 ounces it's a 10 millimeter drop and in my first impression of this shoe that had me a little concerned because usually i like a lower drop for daily training shoes uh, but it turned out to be not an issue at all so 36 millimeter stack height in the heel 26 millimeter in the forefoot a nice uh plush not plush um well cushioned ride for that daily training in urban environments i should say it's a neutral road running shoe quite a bit of twist action actually through that midsole so it is um if you need any sort of stability at all in your shoe this is not the shoe for you uh and let's see oh yeah it's a flight foam midsole which i think asics is going to continue to uh put more flight foam midsoles into other shoes that they have out there on the marketplace for that upper i will say the toe box was a little roomy and i actually kind of liked it for that you know just getting those miles in my toes did not feel scrunched at all through the toe box which i, I liked a lot i appreciated that and moving on to the outsole 
Uh, it's the Asics High Abrasion Rubber, and I actually mentioned this in the first impression. It, it makes me really worried and scared when I see this much rubber on the outsole of a shoe, because a lot of times what happens, what I have found, is that it means the landing is going to be too firm uh, through the foot strike. It's just going to be too, yeah, too firm. So, but somehow Asics has created this high abrasion rubber that has some forgiveness to it. Um, if you press on it, it's like it's not hard at all which tells me for the life expectancy of the shoe i'm i'm thinking at least 500 miles out of the asics gel nimbus light easily so i really like what they're doing there on the outsole good work asics absolutely and i'm gonna say that the gel nimbus light is the definition of a daily trainer it's not an easy day shoe i think you can go a little faster in the shoe if you want i'm gonna say like that eight to 12 mile range, those runs that are eight to 12 miles. So not a middle distance or long run shoe, but just getting the miles in, I really like it. And yeah, you can wear it of course on easy days, but I'm not quite gonna put it into that easy day category. Um, I just think it has a little more potential than an easy day shoe. For that price point, $150. Eh. <clears throat> For that price point, we're looking at $150 if the uh, outsole stands the test of time that let's say 500 plus miles uh, through your running I think that it's worth it at $150 I'd rather see it at that 135 or 130 mark um, but who knows maybe again they're expecting the shoe to go the distance for the runners out there and I forgot to mention for the speed go for uh, $145 I would absolutely pay that again for the speed goat 4 um, and who is this shoe best for again I think a runner that is looking for you know your urban environment uh, a shoe that's gonna last so you don't have to buy shoes every three months I think you could go four or five months uh, depending on your volume and get a lot of miles out of this shoe oh yeah and someone that is looking for a wider toe box I just uh, I had a nice roomy feel through that toe box um, and I went true to size in my sizing so that is my full review of the asics gel nimbus light trying to keep it concise here but i really like it like i'm uh, i don't know if i'd buy it again this year like the same shoe i'd probably wait till next year's iteration but again daily trainer right here bottom my brand did i mention i've put 52 miles into the gel nimbus light all right just want to mention that okay, okay moving on to that nike react infinity run fly knit Okay, nine millimeter drop, so one millimeter less than the Gel Nimbus Light. Also, as far as weight goes, oh yeah, 33 millimeter stack height of the heel, 24 in the forefoot, so plenty of good uh, React foam protection for your legs in this shoe. And in my size, 8.75, so almost identical to the Gel Nimbus Light. And uh, it is definitely a neutral road running shoe there. Look at how twisty it goes there. But they did add this kind of like a stabilizer bar through the heel counter just to give a little more rigidity to that heel counter. I'm not sure it's completely necessary. Um, I'm, I actually, I'm tempted to just rip it off just to see like what it, what the shoe would feel like without that plastic bar wrapping, it's this gray bar wrapping around the heel. Um, so here's the deal on the upper on the fly knit. It is a new updated technology from Nike, this fly knit upper and it was great like it was breathable i think it's going to have some pretty good although you know what i mean i am seeing a little bit of fraying and i've only put uh did i say this already 59 59 miles in the shoe i'm seeing just a little bit of fraying through the toe box nothing major um so it'd be, i'd be curious to see after 200 300 400 miles what that upper would look like my main concern and i'm going to stick with it is that i never was able to get an amazing lockdown through the collar of the shoe it's that booty style collar so very nimble flexible uh i don't i prefer a a collar that has a little more rigidity to it and there is no extra hole for the runner's knot which lends me to say that oh yeah uh, i'll come back to that the outsole which i do believe that this is definitely an easy day shoe so nothing for me over you know nothing faster than 845 a mile or nine minutes a mile just a bopping along type of shoe i'm sure some people will take it to higher speeds i just uh, i prefer more lockdown in my shoes um if i'm gonna go let's say 730 pace or seven minute pace and one last point on that upper and the fit of the shoe i actually I'd be, I, sh I went true to size. I'm almost wishing I would have gone a half size down just to see if that would have helped 
uh, lock the shoe over my foot a little better. Uh, but, you know, water under the bridge, I don't think I'll buy another pair um, and try it out at a, at, a, at a lower size. For the midsole, I love the midsole, very comfortable. And the outsole, it's a wide landing platform. Uh, so if you want a shoe that has nice land, like you're not feeling unstable through the foot strike, I'd say this is the shoe for you. I really like the ride, I really do. The main issue for me is the upper and specifically the collar. Some people love that uh, uh, booty style collar, but I just don't, I don't love it. And on to that price point, $160, oh no. I don't know, Nike, like that's just too much. Like maybe they're thinking this, I, this is, if anyone is using this shoe for faster speeds, let me know down in the comments. I feel like Jordan out there might be one guy who's using, I just don't see it. And maybe people are, but for an easy day shoe, I don't wanna pay any more than 130 bucks, maybe 135 bucks. So, uh, but again, maybe some people are using it, using it for higher speeds. I am not one of those people. So how will I use this shoe moving forward? Easy day. And who is this shoe best for? Um, I'm gonna say personally, if I'm jogging to the gym, do my workout in the gym, and then jog home. That's how I would use the Nike React Infinity Run Flying It. Okay, we did it. The Hoka Speed Go 4, the, I just said it, the React Infinity Run Flying It, and the A6 Gel Nimbus Lite. I would say if I only had um, 100, well, if I had $160 to spend, I would probably spend it on, well, okay, that's a trail shoe, but I'd probably go with the Gel Nimbus Lite over the React, uh, yeah, the React Infinity Run Flying it. Okay, everyone, thanks for being here. Question of the day What shoe would you like me to test next? All right. And you let me know down in the comments. I should probably start a poll somewhere, maybe on the Facebook group. I'll, I'll start a poll and then um, I will buy that shoe. All right. And if it's not on the marketplace yet, maybe it's a shoe that is coming in the next month or so, and I'll buy it and I'll test it out for all of you. Does that sound good? We'll make that happen down in the comments and also over on. Facebook, thanks for being here. We're going to survive. Oh, I'm feeling so much better after taking that medicine once again. All right, everyone, you guys rock. Oh, yeah, we're going to toss it back uh, right here to the uh, running shoe playlist uh, full review right there. So if, there's a lot of shoes that I've done full reviews on. If you haven't seen some of them, if you're new to the channel, you can click on that box right there. And thanks for subscribing if you have not subscribed yet. Okay, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.